Welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. Today we are diving into hip internal rotation. We'll explore the muscles involved, their functions, and look at the range of motion for this movement. For a refresher on hip joint mechanics, check out my previous video on hip flexion. Let's start by understanding what hip internal rotation is. This movement involves turning the thigh inwards towards the body's midline. It's essential for various activities like walking, squatting, and balancing. We'll explore how this movement works by breaking down the muscles involved. First, let's look at the primary muscles responsible for hip internal rotation, the gluteus minimus and the tensor fasciae latae. The gluteus minimus originates from the outer surface of the ilium and inserts into the anterior greater trochanter of the femur. This muscle has anterior fibers that play a major role in initiating internal rotation by pulling the thigh inward. The anterior fibers are particularly active during the initial phase of the internal rotation, helping to start the inward movement of the thigh. The TFL starts at the iliac crest and extends to the iliotibial band. This muscle assists in internal rotation by stabilizing the pelvis and aiding into controlled rotation of the thigh. Next, let's explore the secondary muscles that support internal rotation. The gluteus medius, located beneath the gluteus maximus, has anterior fibers that contribute to internal rotation, especially when the hip is flexed. These fibers assist in fine-tuning the movement and provide additional support. Let's move on to another helper, the adductor longus. The adductor longus originates from the anterior aspect of the body of the pubis, just below the pubic crest. It inserts into the middle third of the linear aspera on the posterior surface of the femur. Although primarily an adductor, the adductor longus assists in internal rotation when the thigh is adducted, by approximately 15 to 30 degrees, towards the body's midline. Now let's shift our focus to the stabilizing muscles that ensure proper alignment during internal rotation. The piriformis, while primarily an external rotator, can assist with internal rotation when the hip is flexed. And in this example, you can observe how fibers in the right position can contribute with their contraction to a whole array of movement. Now. Let's focus on the three other stabilizers I mentioned, the obturator internus and gemellus muscles. These are mainly responsible for maintaining alignment and prevent excessive over-rotation. I think we covered all the muscles. Let's quickly also talk about the range of motion. The average range of motion for hip internal rotation is approximately 30 to 40 degrees, but this is heavy based on flexibility, strength, and anatomical differences. In this example that I chose, you see this internal rotation in a lying position. And even though the leg turns outward, the head of the femur still turns inwards. This can be sometimes confusing when regarding internal rotation. One last thought about range of motion. I have no idea who would train internal rotation and what for. If you have an idea, please leave it in the comments. I would really be happy to read about it. I think we are done for today. This was a rather quick one for internal rotation. I hope you still enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to the next one where we're going to talk about outward rotation. Meanwhile, please remember you can add me on Instagram and also check out my store where I have some posters for you guys. Maybe we want to have one to style up your room. Anyway, thank you for your time and I see you soon back inside the lab.